Welcome to Water Level. Today we're taking a close look at the water levels of Lake Powell and Lake Mead as of late September 2025. These two reservoirs are the largest in the United States, and their elevations tell us a lot about water storage across the Colorado River system. Let's begin upstream at Lake Powell, with four turning to Lake Mead. At Lake Powell, the most recent reading on September 23, 2025, shows the water surface elevation at 3,545.40 feet. This is about 154.6 feet below the full pool level of 3,700 feet, which means the reservoir is sitting at just 27.94% of its full capacity by volume. In simple terms, less than a third of the available storage is filled. Measured at the dam, the lake is currently 413.4 feet deep. Over the past year, Lake Powell has dropped significantly, down by about 33.19 feet compared with the same date last year. It has also fallen more than 32 feet from the highest point reached earlier in the current water year. When looking at the water inflow and release figures for Powell, the pattern helps explain why the level has fallen so sharply. For the 2025 water year, which is nearly complete, inflows have totaled just over 5 million acre-feet, which is only about half of the September average. At the same time, total outflows have reached about 7.35 million acre-feet, which is just shy of the minimum release requirement of 9 million acre-feet. That combination allowed Mead to capture a bit more water than it was able to take in, leading to the steady drop in elevation. If we follow the lake's trend over the past 12 months, the decline becomes even clearer. In September of last year, Powell's level was near 3,578 feet. Through the autumn and winter months, levels gradually decreased, and the decline accelerated through spring. A small rise appeared in late spring and early summer as snowmelt and seasonal flows entered the lake, but that boost was short-lived. By midsummer, levels were falling again, and by September, Powell had reached its lowest point of the year, sitting more than 33 feet lower than it had been just 12 months earlier. Now let's turn downstream to Lake Mead, which tells a slightly different story. On September 23, 2025, Lake Mead stood at an elevation of 1,056.69 feet. This is about 162.91 feet below its full pool elevation of 1,219.60 feet. By content, the reservoir is holding just over 31% of its maximum storage. That puts Mead only slightly ahead of Powell in terms of percentage, but still well below a healthy level. Compared to one year ago, Lake Mead is down just over 7 feet, which is a much smaller decline than we saw at Powell. In fact, Mead is actually up about 2.62 feet from the lowest point it reached earlier in this water year, suggesting a recent recovery. The data on inflows helps explain this difference. Total inflows into Mead for the 2025 water year are about 7.71 million acre-feet, which is 118% of the long-term average. Outflows from Hoover Dam, on the other hand, have totaled about 7.79 million acre-feet, which is under the minimum release requirement of 9 million acre-feet. That combination allowed Mead to capture a bit more water than it expected earlier in the year, helping to keep its levels from falling as steeply as Powell's. Looking at the chart of Mead's water levels over the past 12 months, the seasonal pattern stands out. Last September, the lake sat near 1,064 feet. Through the autumn, the elevation declined, reaching just above 1,060 feet in late fall. Starting in January, inflows began to raise the level, and by March and April, the lake peaked near 1,067 feet. After that, summer brought another gradual decline, but that dip was far less dramatic than Powell's. In August and September, the levels actually began to recover slightly, which is why the current reading shows a modest gain compared to the lowest point earlier this year. When we compare both lakes side by side, the differences in their situations become clear. Lake Powell has experienced a sharp and steady decline, losing over 33 feet in elevation compared to last year. Its storage percentage has slipped below 28%, showing that inflows have been too weak to keep up with outflows. Meanwhile, Lake Mead, though still well below full pool, has shown more stability. Its decline over the past year has been just over 7 feet, and recent weeks have even seen a slight rebound. 
By content, it remains just above 31%, giving it a slight edge over Powell. The numbers also highlight the different water management challenges for each reservoir. At Powell, outflows have exceeded inflows by millions of acre-feet, leading to a significant net loss. At Mead, inflows have been relatively strong, at more than 118% of average, which helped to offset the heavy releases downstream. While both reservoirs remain well below full pool, the contrast is that Powell has been on a steep downward slope, while Mead has managed to hold steadier. Altogether, the water levels at both lakes remind us of how dynamic these reservoirs can be within a single year. Powell's chart shows a sharp fall with only a small seasonal bump, while Mead's graph displays a more balanced curve with both declines and gains over the months. In late September 2025, both lakes remained far from capacity, but the current numbers show Powell struggling with deep losses, while Mead benefits from better inflows and a modest decline. And that wraps up the latest update on Lake Powell and Lake Mead water levels. As of September 23, 2025, Powell is sitting at just under 5,546 feet, well below full pool, and down more than 33 feet from last year. Mead is at 1,056.69 feet, more than 160 feet below full pool, but showing more resilience, with only a 7-foot drop compared to last year and a small rebound in recent weeks. Both reservoirs remain critical to the Colorado River system, and their water levels will continue to shape water storage and use across the region. And that's the full picture of Lake Powell and Lake Mead water levels as of late September 2025. Both lakes remain far from full, with Powell showing sharp declines and Mead holding slightly steadier. We'll keep following these levels closely, so if you'd like to stay updated with the latest readings and trends, be sure to check back for the next report. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next update.